Looks like it's almost time for the chickens to come home to roost, eh, Allenson? I am not one to badmouth the man of the club, but an eight o'clock start time? I mean, the last time I had to postpone supper is because my flight was delayed arriving back from the Maldives. And the Maldivians have about the same idea of what's going on here as George. Oh. <laughs> there was nothing quite like it, George, let me tell you that. The tenderloin was inside of the crepe. Truly remarkable. I mean, it was one of the best meals I've had this week. <laughs> Do you have any issues to discuss during Congress this evening? Well, of course I do. It is my duty as the treasurer of this club. <laughs> Won't be treasurer for much longer there, MacArthur. Not after what happened at Port Moresby. Actually, Calloway, I... Welcome back, gentlemen. Now, despite the absence of Wallander, we're gonna get started with the first club meeting of the new year. And to kick off the new year, Bamford told us that he resolved the problem he had with the dog that was walking onto the house lawn. I strangled it. Oh, oh. <laughs> Well done, Bamford, well done. But, good news aside, we do have important things to discuss this evening, including the chickens coming home to roost. Now, the past year has been hard on all of us. As you all should know, Leeds University and even this very Rotary Club is often struck by hardship, plagued by change. The saving grace, gentlemen, has been and will always be this club's ability to usher in our own prevailing sentiment. From the breath in our lungs, through the walls of this cathedral, However daunting the challenge may be, the gentlemen of this club have always believed that it is not just our honor, but our right to lead the university for better, to effect positive change throughout. And I challenge any dissenters, any dissenters, to summon themselves so they may be struck down, their ranks decimated beyond a shadow of a doubt to the gods that will witness this thrashing and force themselves to tell the tale for eons to come! I have a note from the treasurer. There is currently an unaccounted for invoice on the Rotary Club's account to the tune of $3.50, perpetrated by Calloway when he requested money from the club treasury to purchase a soda on the 5th of December of this previous year. That is all. Let it be known that Calloway owes the club treasury $3.50. Hello, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure seeing you all, and it has been a pleasure congregating with you all eight times a year. As a matter of fact, I'm starting to feel like an octopus myself. Let's get serious for a moment, chaps. As some of you know, the lawn party outside Bastion Manor was a smashing success. This spells out good things for the club going forward, and I look fondly ahead to the times we'll have in the new calendar year. Here we go. Where's the mess of bears? You can't hold your load. Great speech. Get out, you cow. Get out. Oh, and you might. I have a grievance to air! For three whole weeks, I have had to drive by the university gym on my way to both classes and studies because of Blagenmeyer Avenue being overrun by those. Those, those godforsaken orange and white barrels, burly men in tight jeans and fluorescent jackets, the machinery of the plebeian class so commonly referred to as simply construction in this disheartening modern age we live in. You may think me an overreaction, good fellows of the Harrington Rotary Club upperclassmen, but allow me to retort. 
Every day I have to attend classes or studies, I have to drive slowly through the construction, past the wretched and miserable establishment known only as Jimmy's. And at Jimmy's, they have no shortage of business. Let me tell you that! I see all the scholarship students mobbing in and out of their building every chance they get, jostling each other in line like an amoeba, purchasing their goddamned hot dogs like their life depends on Gracie's sustenance. But let me tell you, they all smell the same. It's the bloody smell you see. It's the onions mixed with the pickles, mixed with the relish, mixed with the ketchup. It reeks of a barnyard on that block every waking hour of every possible day. And they pay for this detritus. They're helping the economy. They go in, they go out, they go in, they go out. It never ends with the lower classes portering their white paper bags down Blagenmeyer Avenue, blocking my path with their absolute stench. I tell you, I can't take it. I had my Uncle Lawrence tells me to simply buy them out. But even if my allowance covers it, the proprietors of the establishment have not returned any of my emails! Langley, the airing of grievances isn't until later in the evening. Now, before he was so rudely interrupted, Allenson will bring about the first order of business for the evening. Allenson. Thank you, George, for the warm introduction. As you know, community is one of the most important things we have as a society. And as leaders in our own community, it's up to us to, to give back and help out in any way we can. However, unfortunately, the chickens came home to roost last Thursday when I was walking home from Darby Hall and saw what appeared to be a, a homeless man on the corner of Oak and Willoughby. This is our first order of business tonight. I know, don't get God. upset. Damn it, it's God. a sad so, day. It's a sad day, what? I appreciate that. How did we allow this to happen? I don't know. We elect one Democrat to state legislature, and this is what oh, they did. That son of a bitch. That son of a fucking bitch. Well, what are we going to do? Strangle him. It's the only way. We can't strangle him. And why not? What if we called campus police? Hose them down like they did the protesters back in the day. Nah, those cooks would never go for it. They're all soft. Then the FBI. I wish Wallander were here. He would know what to do. Richter, whatever came of that pellet gun you got two Christmases ago? Which one? The Spanish one. Got smashed. Shame. Shame. No, I've got it. We'll use poison. Poison? Yeah, poison. We'll poison them like they did in the old films. Oh yeah, old films. It's not a bad idea, I. 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 Well, we could slip it into a trash pin, I figure, and once the old codger rummages around a bit, I mean, you wouldn't even know what hit him. Morg takes care of the rest. Well, then it's settled. Hear ye, hear ye. Hear ye, hear ye. Oh, how I miss the Rotary Club, boys. Oh, how I missed it so. Oh, wonderful. Simply wonderful. Our next order of business is elections for the position of club treasurer. And MacArthur is the incumbent. And his challenger on the ballot today is Calloway, who performed swimmingly in the primaries. What's Calloway's first name? Well, looks like the cat's out of the bag. Let's begin voting. All in favor of MacArthur say aye. aye. And all in favor of Calloway say aye. 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 Well, then it's settled. MacArthur is history, and Calloway is the new head of the club treasury what, department. What, 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 what? That's not fair. <laughs> where, where, where is the justice for your treasurer? If you vote me out, you can kiss the money from great-grandfather goodbye. This is a betrayal, simply a betrayal. Well, what did you expect after the Port Moresby situation? Port Moresby was one time on a yacht, and it was because the captain of the ship was piloting it in a drunken stupor. That was out you of my control. were the captain! That's it! My grandfather told me to fight for what's right. Calloway, if you have any honor at all, you will meet me at the head of this table. Hi. 
How dare you declare me unfit to handle your money, Calloway? You were like a brother to me. You were addicted to crack cocaine. And now I'm not. Do you know how hard that is? Fine. Name your game. A duel. First shoulders pinned. I accept. I accept. May the best man win. Three. Two. One go! Who do you think's gonna win? Do you know what sustenance means? Personally, I think Reagan was robbed in Minnesota. Nobody ever roots for Goliath. Shame. Richter, did you have our third order of business? Yes. Yes, I did. First of all, I'd like you all to know that my tennis instructor's prostate cancer has been cured. Thanks in no small part to the fundraiser we held last August in which the vast, vast majority of funds were embezzled, but his cancer has been cured. That being said, uh, Dingen Hall has tasked our club with choosing the new flooring for their indoor amphitheater lobby. So we must vote again on porcelain tiling or hardwood flooring. Something to say. What, what? What do you have to say? 